Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at one hell of a game in the Horizon Cup, guys. And I just I just had to make a video out of this gonna, uh, this one. I just had to. So, who is it? It's Team Secret against Team Queso. And um, uh, Team Queso is the EU representative, of course. And Team Secret, I'm actually not quite sure which where they're from, but they are incredibly good. Like, Jesus, man, there are like there are some incredible teams in this Horizon Cup tournament. So, and this game, <laughs> you guys are gonna love this game. You guys are really gonna love this game. And the highlight is gonna go to Team uh, to Azar from Team Secret, guys. The highlight is gonna go to him. That's all I'm gonna say. So, um, I do want to give a quick little backstory about Team Secret, though. Team Secret is like, you know, you you guys seeing this guy Hamas? He's like the captain of this team. He's like the man of this team, right? Like, you know, uh, he's the big legend of this team. But then this Azar guy, oh my god! Like they, these guys just have absolute incredible players. So let's take a look at how these play people play. <clears throat> so, um. Um, you know what I find quite hilarious about uh, Horizon Cup especially? It's that all these EU and NA people were trash-talking each other like absolute apes. But EU and NA are like the worst regions in this tournament. So perhaps a bit weird to see that, uh, you know, the two worst regions have the two biggest mouths. I mean, you know, of course that's going to happen, but yeah. So I want to say another thing though. Acolyte is definitely the best player from Team Queso. And you're going to see how Team Secret is going to play around that. Because... Um, well, not only Team Secret, really. Oh my god, look, Azar is actually winning. So, you know what's funny uh, about Team Queso? Every single team that plays against Team Queso, they absolutely hard focus the top uh, the top lane, which is Acolyte. And for some reason, Team Queso is just not able to do any counterplay to that. Every time it happens, so, you know, every time Acolyte gets ganked on his Darius and just, you know, demolished in the early game, they don't really have any counter to it. Here you can actually see Azar winning the lane. Oh my god, wait. I'm gonna show you what happened here. This was absolutely amazing. Here you can already see the start of Azar's power. So the, the thing that Azar just did here, he used his first ability, and then he like he kind of queued up his first ability, and then during his first ability, he used his flash, and the new way, like the new way of flash, they changed it, remember guys? Allows you to actually get further with the first ability. So take a look at how he does it. He uses his first ability and then he flashes to him to make sure he hits. Unfortunately, he didn't get the kill though. Um, but that, like you're gonna see him do some amazing combos with that. Let me tell you what, what you can do with the flash combo with Fiora. If you use your first ability, like if an enemy is here and the vital is here, and you're Fiora, you use your first ability like this, and then you flash behind the enemy, you're actually gonna proc the vital. I'm just gonna tell you guys that, and now you guys should continue watching. By the way, make sure you give this video a like if you enjoyed, you know, I might do more of them if you guys like them. Or give them a like. Yesterday I have the mont uh, I made the montage as well. You know, you guys liked it a lot. So I just want to give you guys a lot of fun to watch, right? I'm going to make montages of the tournament. I'm going to make two more. Here, look at this. Look at this. This is what I mean. This is what I mean. Look, this is exactly what I mean. I just talked about it. This is the exact strategy that pretty much any team does against Team Queso. And they win. Literally, like the first game of Team Queso. Team Queso only won. Well, they were just good, of course. But they mainly won because of Acolyte. Because of him winning his lane so that what is every team doing against team Kezo? they're ganking acolyte as you can see he just can't do anything against it he tries to avoid the kill but he dies he just dies and as you can see he like he just dies he just he's just dead and meanwhile andre is just kind of chilling on the other side of the map i really want to see team Kezo actually do something against the ganks against acolyte because every single game he gets ganked and he gets killed they're just like every team makes it so hard for him to make a comeback in this game but he still does it that's the beauty of it acolyte is definitely the star player of team Kezo. <clears throat> yeah look at this like, he just can't do anything. He he already knew. Look at this. He already knew because he did have proper vision. He had a ward over here where my mouse is at. So he knew, but it was just too late because Lee Sin is super fast. And, like, he really can't do anything. He, you, you can't blame him for his death. It's just he always gets ganked. <laughs> Um, let's take a look at here though. Andre is looking for something right here. He's, like, taking those those stone monsters. He's potentially looking for something, as you can see. But he doesn't really go for it. I mean... He couldn't, to be honest. Like, it's kind of questionable, you know? It's kind of questionable, these rotations. Of course, he has he has a lot of gold, Andre. But he ha he's not helping any lane right here. And that's what I don't like about Team Queso. Um, especially Acolyte. Like, they just need to help his lane out. 
Now, the problem is, Acolyte is going to lose 1v1s against Fiora, because Fiora has 2,800 gold, Acolyte has 2,300. So there is almost no way for Acolyte to kill the Fiora, unless he completely outplays him, but it's Azar on Fiora. You're not simply going to outplay Azar. You know what's also funny? Um, because of all these aggressive plays, Acolyte is actually going for fleet footwork on Darius. He used to go for Conqueror, but now he's going for fleet footwork, and... I feel like he's going for fleet footwork because he knows he's just getting ganked constantly. Like, you know, he just doesn't want to lose his lane super hard. <clears throat> okay, so the dragon is spawning. Let's take a wait, let's let's quickly take a look at what's happening. The dragon spawned. Let's take a look at the map right here. Oriana and Lee Sin are on the Rift Herald. Team Queso looks to be interested on the dragon, but Azar is in the bot lane. So what Team Secret is doing here, let me tell you what Team Secret is doing here, which is incredibly smart. Team Secret is actually leaving the Dragon, which is fine. They're going for the Rift Herald, but they're not leaving any other lane. Fiora in the bot lane. There's people in the mid lane. Oriana in the top lane. They're pushing out all the lanes, making sure Team Queso is going to lose as much farm as possible. Like, take a look at this. Oriana top lane, Lucian mid lane, Fiora bot lane. What is Team Queso doing? They're being very one-dimensional, going for the dragon. They're thinking like, ooh, we're going to get the Infernal Dragon. We're going to get super ahead. Yes. Guys, that's not how it works. Team Queso is making a huge mistake here by leaving all of the other lanes. Like, look, sure, they'll get the, they'll get the dragon. But let's take a look at the gold count. Take a look at the gold, okay? So, team, right now, Team Secret is 700 gold ahead, right now. Let's look at it in one minute, okay? Remember, 700 gold. <laughs> Take a look at it. 700 gold. Look at how fast Team Secret's gold count is gonna go up. Look at this. They're already 1k up. 1k. Why are they 1k up? Because they're pushing out all of the other lanes. They're going for the Rift Herald. You know, they're splitting up what they're doing. And look at this. They're like so ahead right now. I mean, of course, if, if Team, K, Team, C, uh, Team K so takes the dragon, it's going to be fine again. But they just basically, basically, they just got, they just got a 500 gold bonus just by that small little play. And it's these small things that people don't really see, which I do see actually. And, like these get you so ahead in the game you know you do this and then you do this and then you do this 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 500 gold every time it's a lot like they literally got ahead 500 gold in 10 seconds in 10 seconds and that is because of their split pushing guys so now they're actually getting a turret as well with the rift herald and now you can clearly see that their play was way better than team queso because now they are 2000 gold ahead is it worth the infernal dragon no it is not. This is not worth the Infernal Dragon. Being behind 2,000 gold this early on in the game, like if you look at it percentage-wise, it's like almost, it's like 12% behind for an Infernal Dragon. An Infernal Dragon gives you 6% damage, but you're 12% behind. See what I'm doing here? You're 12% behind, but you got a 6% damage bonus. One second, let me look at this. So it is not worth it. Team Queso gave away way too much for it. Oh, what's happening here? Look at the Fiora. Oh! nice oh he gets the double look at it wait let's look at it again let's look at it again i didn't pay too much attention to it wait let's let's focus on the fiora right here focus on the fiora so he's just chilling here they go in on the tank which is not the best idea but oh he filled and he okay so azar you he procs a vital and immediately uses his ultimate on ruiz let's take a look at this he gets the kill on him, he gets the kill on graves and of course he gets the kill on varus i mean there's no way he loses against varus right Oh, baby, look at that. That's what I mean, guys. Fiora getting ahead. Everyone is getting ahead. And Fiora did not even buy items yet. Imagine what's going to happen when Fiora buys her items, guys. Oh, my God. So, um, I'm trying to give you guys some different perspectives, right, that you want to have in games. Where people, like, this is where people overestimate dragons. <clears throat> overestimate dragons. <coughs> A good team can capitalize on a bad team, and bad team, uh, I mean just a team that only wants the dragon and, you know, would give away anything for the dragon. Because as I said, dragon gives 6% damage buff, but they lost like 12% gold, right? If you look at it relatively in the early game. So, Team Secret is going to be able to snowball it out of control. Well, they could, they could, because they're going to have way more damage, way more tankiness, way more everything. Because look at Fiora, she's almost 2,000 gold ahead right now. 2,000, only on the Fiora. And they go for the dive. They go for the dive. Oh, actually, Team Queso did it beautifully here. Let's take a look at, let's take a look at what Team Queso did here. Take a look at Andre. He's just waiting in the bush. 
Memorized is coming on the rock on like they're 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 collapsing on it acolyte like what they're telling acolyte right now Yo, bro, just waste some time waste as much time as you can under the turret So what does he do? He goes all the way at the back of the turret. He uses his barrier He's gonna use his first ability to heal up as you can see he wasted a lot of time and did what he had to do Team Queso is of course gonna come ahead of this and for some reason Fiora still gets a kill out of that and gets out like, this guy is absolutely incredible. They, he shouldn't have gotten a kill and gotten out. Team Queso actually played that perfectly macro-wise, you know. Darius went all the way back in the turret to waste as much time as possible, used his barrier on the right moment, flashed and used his first ability to heal up. You know, he did his absolute best to waste time. They collapsed on them, they got the kill, but Fiora still got a kill somehow. Still, she got a kill. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying this type of video, make sure you give it a like. Put down a comment, I don't really know what, just put something down. And I actually give private sessions like this as well, where I give these tips and tricks. Uh, it's the coaching, right? So you can find it on my Patreon. There's a link in the description if you want private coaching. These are the type. These are the types of things that I'm gonna find in your gameplay, right? Like you're gonna have no idea why you're losing or why the enemy is getting ahead. I'm gonna analyze it from a challenger perspective. You know, I play every champion in the game. I like I know a lot about the game. So you know, if you want the private coaching. There is a link in the description to the Patreon. Okay, so back to the game. Um, I really like how Hamas on the Guragas is actually constantly rotating and uh, Memorize on the Rakan is countering it. Like both supports are doing an incredible job in this game to support the entire team. You can see that Akra is actually still trying to look for something here, but it's not going to work against the level 10 Fiora, guys. He can't do anything against the level 10 Fiora. So, but what's, uh, what's also nice to see is that Hamas the Gragas is basically the one that's dictating the game compared to Memorized. You can clearly see Hamas is rotating and Memorized is following, right? Like, and it's that advantage that Team Secret has in this game right now, which is, you know, which is going to get them ahead in this game. Because if you constantly have to follow the enemy support, you're at a disadvantage. The enemy support is going to be there first. And, you know, it's obviously a disadvantage. So, um, you can also see the confidence in Team Secret, you know, especially in Hamas. Like, look, Memorize tries to do something here, which I like, but you can't just go on the support and get something out of it. Like here, you can see he just flashes out of it and yeah, whatever, he escapes, right? Um, they did get a minor advantage for the dragon, perhaps, because they got the Gragas at a low amount of HP, but man, Oriana just pokes out the Rakan so hard, like, it's so hard for Team Kesa to do anything here. And honestly, what Team Kesa should do here, what I would say is push out all the lanes because you can see Team Secret is doing it again. They're not only like Team Secret is not one dimensional. Team Secret is actually pushing. Oh, actually, wait, they are here. He's oh, they go for the counter play. So what Team Secret does here, instead of pushing out this turret, because Hamas could have gotten a turret and they could have gotten the dragon. Um Yeah, instead of that, they actually abandon this lane and they go for the fight at the Rift Herald. So this is, an, of course, this is the counterplay that you can do. And the reason that Team Secret is doing this, because they know they're, or they think that they're going to win a five versus five fight. So they actually decide to abandon a uh, abandon an advantageous trade, because if they trade the dragon and the turret for the Rift Herald, it's an advantageous trade for Team Secret. They actually go for the higher risk play by fighting Team Queso at the Rift Herald to try to take it all. Honestly, do I like this play? I mean... Team Kesa is actually giving it away for free. So you can say that it was good, actually. Like, they, as a, even though they gave away a turret for it and uh, a dragon, it's fine because they're likely going to get the dragon anyways. And now they have the Rift Herald as well. So they're just not allowing any counterplay from Team Kesa. It's actually good to see that, you know, this is very aggressive play. But here you can see, like, this is, this is what I was talking about. Team Queso is getting in it, right? This is the risk that they're taking. Team Queso could steal this dragon and win a fight. Now, that is why I was still saying, like, it's a questionable play to do. Because, you know, even though they want to completely snowball the game, it might sometimes be good to just take a little bit out of the snowball and leave it there. Because making a too big, too big of a snowball, it can collapse, guys. As you can see here, it's just they're taking a risk. Like, this can get stolen. This can absolutely get stolen. <coughs> They actually do secure it, but the fight, are they going to win the fight? Boom, boom, look at this, exactly what I talked about. They're getting kills, but the Fiora, <laughs> the Fiora is just killing everyone in the backline. Oh my God. 
Guys, I want to show you something real beautiful here. I, would, I want you guys to look at the Fiora flash combo under the third, okay? I went back into the video. Fiora just killing everyone, by the way. Look at the Fiora. What the hell? He dodges the Diana ultimate as well. But look at this. Look at this. Look at what he's what look at what he's about to do, okay? It's true that Ruiz used his stasis enchant, but I want to highlight how beautiful this flash combo was by the Fiora. Look. First ability, and he flashed. If the Diana didn't use stasis here, he would have actually hit one of his one of his um I'm not sure what it's called. The thing is the 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 X the bonus damage things. Oh my god, look at him. Oh my god, he kills the graves as well. What? <laughs> Dude, this guy is too good on Fiora, bro. What? I mean, just look at the Fiora. Let's fully focus on the Fiora. He gets a quadra kill, an unofficial quadra kill. So let's take a look at the Fiora. Fiora sees Varus and the Diana here. And he actually goes on the Varus in the back line. He does a perfect dodge with his second ability. He gets the Varus. Of course, like, of course he blocks the Varus ultimate. He dodges the Diana ultimate. He then uses the beautiful flash combo, but unfortunately, Ruse used the stasis enchant. Then he goes under the turret. He kills Darius for free. But, well, actually, but barely he kills Darius. He goes under the turret, takes the honey fruit, and with one HP before getting hit by the turret, he gets another kill. Oh my god. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> Of course he's happy. Of course he's happy, guys. Oh my god. Oh, they're collapsing. Team Chaos is looking for some place right here, as you can see. But the thing is, like, you know what the thing is right here? There are flashes, right? And when you go for all in place, like when you go for all in place, like Team Queso is doing right here. By the way, sorry, my neighbor is, is hammering something. I'm not quite sure what. If you go for these all in place, you're risking that the enemy just uses his flash. If you all in a single enemy like like they're doing right here, you're risking that. Oh my God! Look at that damage. Oh baby, they got the kill. Oh nice, they're at one HP. Look at them, they're at one HP. Come on, MS. Oh, he does the flash combo. He can't kill the Diana though. Damn. If he if Hamas actually flashed on the Diana, he would have probably killed both of them, by the way. Because Diana had the barrier to survive. If he flashed on the Diana, he would have killed the Diana and then he would have killed the Graves as well. Very likely. <clears throat> they even lost an inhibitor, by the way. While we were watching over there, they lost an inhibitor. Is he gonna get it? He's pretty fast. I don't think he's gonna Yeah, he's not gonna get it. He has the barrier. Or like the barrier of the second ability. Yeah, look at this. Actually beautifully played by Team Kesa right here. It's really nice to see that the Diana didn't abandon his teammate and, you know, Ruiz just went back in and got the kill. Look, if Hamas would have gone on the Diana here, if he would have gone on the Diana, he would have killed both of them. Imagine if he flashed on the Diana and then, you know, done his full combo on the Graves. Because you can see, of course, he gets a kill here. But when he goes on the Diana, he deals a lot of damage, but it's not quite enough because Diana has her second ability. She got a double shield from it, so they weren't able to get the kill. Uh, he wasn't able to get the double kill right there. So he could have actually quite easily gotten a double kill if he used his flash on the right target right there. <clears throat> oh, they're waiting for him. But it's at least Sid. Can he get the kill? Oh, they're doing really good combos though. Like their combos were perfect. They were they, they pretty much forced Ali Sin to use his flash right there. That was well played. But you can clearly see like uh, uh, whenever Team Queso gets a pick on them, it's every time the flash. Like Team Secret always have their flashes ready if they're getting caught out. Like that's kind of the problem for Team Queso right here because they're doing these all ins or just getting going on single targets every time they're getting flashed. Like the enemy is just flashing away. But man, I want to emphasize how good Azar has played this game. The the Fiora, like absolutely incredible performance from Azar. It was really, really good. Like incredible, incredible performance up until now. Like I wonder if Team Queso is gonna make the comeback, huh? Um, yeah. Now they're just stealing away the red side jungle. So the thing is though, Darius can still kill Fiora. By the way, even if he's two levels behind, if you didn't know already, if the Darius uh, perfectly uses all of his abilities. And kind of stays under his turret, like he has to stay close to his turret, otherwise he's not going to win against a two level ahead Fiora. He can actually potentially kill the Fiora, he can, potentially, if he outplays him, stays under the turret, things like that. But otherwise Fiora is just always going to win with the right place, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they just get a free dragon, 
Team Kesa doesn't even contest because they can't really contest it. Like they're just gonna lose a fight if they contest. See the the, the problem is as well. They um, Team Secret also has an Oriana, so you know they also have that late game like the incredible late game damage. And meanwhile, Team Kesa has a zero three Varus who is struggling super hard against the Fiora. Sure, Diana is doing fine, but the Varus is just not doing anything in this game right now. <clears throat> <laughs> Imagine if he stole that, that would have been funny. Again, look, again, Team Secret is just way better with the with uh, the lane management. They're constantly pushing out the lanes. They're getting way more gold and experience. Like, look, look, the top wave is gonna collapse and they're gonna lose some gold and experience for it. Of course they rotate to it now, but this has this has been happening throughout the entire game where Team Team Keso has constantly been losing gold and experience by le letting lanes crash into their turrets. Team Secret, on the other hand, is just constantly pushing out. You can see Fiora in the bot lane. Like, they're just, you know, these guys are really good with managing the waves getting as much gold and experience as they can like here team Kaiso is just sticking together because they're afraid of a fight but team secret as confident as they are they're pushing out the turrets they're going for you know they're just going for the hero place and fiora is actually diving the darius and the darius almost won the fight you can see he almost won it it was very close there is potential for Darius to win the fight, but Azar is just way too good on that Fiora, man. Like, he's two levels ahead. They go in, however. They're going in, they're winning the fight because the Fiora's not here. Take a look at this. They w they absolutely win the fight right here. Fiora is just split pushing, by the way. Look, they win. They won the fight. They won a four versus four. This was absolutely beautiful by the by Team Keso because they took the fight while the Fiora was gone. This was the absolute right decision because this kind of gives them a chance to win the fight, which they did. Now they're being greedy and want another kill. Let's take a look at what's going to happen. That's the first death. That's the second death. And that's the third death. And they are not able to deal with the Fiora either. Like, they just can't kill the Fiora in the bot lane. They were way too greedy for for kills. Keso was way too greedy right there. They should have just abandoned after getting that kill. They, like, they heavily underestimated the Lee Sin damage right there. They, I think they kind of forgot that Lee Sin is, like, super giga ahead. Just like the Fiora, right? Yeah, you can see, like, even the Graves can't 1v1 the Lee Sin. It's incredible how strong the Lee Sin is right, uh, at this stage of this game. Of course, Lee Sin is going to fall off at some point. But it's not this point quite yet. He's still strong, right? He is still strong. And he's still able to completely demolish Team Keso. They're going for the Baron. Although they're at a quite, quite a low amount of HP. But it's like all five of them. So, you know, they can go for it. Like, Darius is not really able to do anything here. Because it's, yeah. You know, you're one versus five. So, they just got the Baron. <clears throat> now they need to pick a kill. Like, now they have to get a kill. If Team Keso doesn't get a kill right now. Like, here you can see they're indeed going for it. They just have to go for it. They're not? Yeah, they're not. Okay. They, they kind of had to... Like, now they pretty much lost the game. There's no way to defend this, to be honest. They've lost two inhibited turrets. They're against very oppressive champions like Lee Sin and Fiora and Gragas, right? Who can just turret dive you and kill all of you. And yeah, with the Baron, so there's really no way to defend this. Unless they take a five, five versus five fight, which they have a very low chance of winning, of course. So they should have actually looked to pick off an enemy, potentially getting a kill. Even though the chance is like very low that it actually works. <clears throat> again, like again, you can see Team Secret pushing three lanes at the same time. They're very effectively utilizing the entire map. Like they're not playing with tunnel vision. This is really amazing to see. You like we we can also learn a lot from this gameplay. When you're playing ranked, like utilize the entire map. It's so so good. Like look at this. Azarish is applying so much pressure right here. Just gets the kill. Meanwhile, in the top lane, they're pushing. And in the mid lane, we have the Lee Sin with the Baron lane minions. Like, Team Keso just has no idea what to do. And look at this. He just dies. One versus five. Gets three kills. And he dies, though. But he gets three kills. And, of course, now the game is over, as you can see. So... Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope you enjoyed the analysis. I saw a lot of comments asking for videos like these. So, of course, I make them, right? So, thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah, look at them. Absolute legends. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, yeah, I will see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.